The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Heck Show? Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we'll be building a macro controller for Xbox 360. Chris Cox of Mercer County Special Services School District in Hamilton, New Jersey, requested this project for a student, Patrick. Most of the students Chris works with are very physically involved. Some are in wheelchairs with limited use of limbs or even on respirators. Chris has modified some simple toys with switches so his students can take control of them, but he faces different challenges interfacing things with newer gaming systems. One of Chris's students, Patrick, wants to play more complex action games such as X-Men Origins Wolverine, but Chris says he isn't sure where to begin with the controller and asks for my help. What we're going to do is build a macro controller Chris can connect his existing switches to, allowing Patrick to perform complex functions with a single click. However, when I got this project request, I was hard at work at pinball and needed a little encouragement to get me started. Ben worked on pinball long through the night. I will sell these all if the price is right. Please, sir, I can barely work in this cold. We'll turn on the heat when the pinballs are sold. After playing Battlefield, Ben went to bed, his inbox full of emails unread. One of the messages that went unseen was about a boy wishing to play Wolverine. Oh, ben, I've come to tell you it isn't too late for you to change your ways and escape my fate. You will be visited by Ghosts of Technology 3 who will stop you from being consumed by pinball like me. I am the ghost of technology past. Spirit, how long will this bad dream last? I will show you mods of years gone by from back when you were still a decent guy. The time you would do your best to fulfill each and every custom request. But Spirit, can't you see I'm not the same? You must help more people game. The next spirit to arrive was very annoyed that Ben seemed to like using Android. I am the ghost of present technology. I suppose you too have a lesson to teach me. Behold this email from a teacher named Chris. It speaks of a project you simply can't miss. iPhone tell me, will he be able to play this game? Without your controller, it won't be the same. Wait a moment. Are you the spirit of technology future? Yes, I'm an iPhone with just one new feature. Very well, spirit. What should I know? One day, my boy, you won't have a show. I'm sorry, Ben isn't in. He's gone sour. This is now Allison's super cute animal hour. No, spirit, don't show me these horrors. For $100, this pinball is yours. No! It was just a dream. What month is it, Siri? It's still December. Not too late, if you hurry. Hoorah, it's not too late. I'll rush to my shop and change my fate. All right, so we're going to be making a breakout box that goes between some uh, simple push-button controllers, like maybe a foot pedal, here, and that goes into a 1 8 inch or 2.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is just monarial, and that'll go into a box that has a whole bunch of those jacks on it, so you can plug in different ports. 
Inside this box will be a microcontroller. I think I'll probably use a PIC32 since I'm used to it. It'll take these inputs and then use them to create macros to play the game. Then this will connect via ribbon cable to an Xbox 360 controller. Perfect drawing, it kind of looks like a face, yes. Anyway, so what happens over here is, um, this is gonna be hooked up just like my controller monitors where all of the button signals are brought out. Those analyze the signals, but in this case, we can actually use this microcontroller to trick the controller into thinking the buttons are being pushed. So if there's an action game where you have to do XX triangle to bash someone, like in God of War, which isn't on the play Xbox or whatever, um, one button can create a macro that sends that series of commands to the controller to make it easier for people to execute the commands. So yeah, basically we're just basically making a uh, interpretation layer between the controller and some simplified controllers. All right, so on a game controller, you have your signal line right here, and then it goes over to a pad like this. You've probably seen these if you've ever taken something apart. It's brown. So what happens is this is um, the signal line and it's usually pulled active high by a resistor, which may be internal, but whatever. So you've got 3.3 volts here. So the signal is getting 3.3 volts or a one. When you push the button, you contact it to ground, which pulls this to zero. That's how it knows the button's being pushed. So what we're gonna do is on this side, the signal line, we're gonna connect that to our microcontroller. And the microcontroller can either have it at 3.3 volts or it can pull it low. So basically the microcontroller can make this think ground is being, or the button's being pushed. Does that make sense? It should. It's not too complicated. Basically you're gonna make like a phantom zombie controller. There are zombies into it. Pop culture, vampires too. Yes, it will suck the signals like a vampire. I love electronics. They can help you spark new ideas and let you build amazing things. Fortunately, the folks over at element14.com make it easy for me to find all the right parts for all my projects. You already know Element 14 has the best community for engineers with access to industry experts, independent technical information, and helpful tools. But did you also know they offer the latest products, services, and solutions too? They provide next day delivery on hundreds of thousands of components, services, and solutions from 3,500 world leading manufacturers. You can also enjoy free technical support directly from Element 14 engineers online or on the phone, and there are no minimum order requirements. Just use the store dropdown on the element14.com site to launch the storefront from your locations no matter where you are around the globe. At element14.com, you'll find the parts, tools, information, and answers you need to keep your projects on the fast track right from the start. And now, back to the show. Now, if you're modifying Xbox 360 controllers, there's something you need to look for. They're not all created the same. Some of them don't use the simple um, one zero signaling on each button, they actually use a more complex matrixing system. You can also see this through the battery pack opening, but if the plus and minus are inside of a circle, it's much easier to modify the controller. If they're outside of the circle, it's harder to modify. It's in a different factory or something. Also another indicator is one big integrated circuit instead of two big integrated circuits. So for each button, there's a signal line here that's normally one, 3.3 volts, when you push the button, it contacts this and pulls it to ground, makes it zero. So we're going to attach our sniffer lines on this side of each button. So these buttons will still work, but you can also trigger them externally using the macros, which is what we're doing. All right, I'm just gonna show you a few things with desoldering here. It may seem counterintuitive, but the best way to remove solder is to add more solder, because you kind of reflow what's already there. Okay. And then, you take your desoldering iron, got a Weller one here. Here's what I usually do, you go, on the, you go on the pin, you heat it up, and you go in a circle, and then you suck it out. And the reason I do that is because it kind of loosens the pin, so the pin isn't like stuck on the side of the wall, it's kind of hanging in the middle, open. And that means the solder can be released around all the sides of it. See, that works pretty good. Here at the Ben Hex Show, we recycle. All of these IDE hard drive cables that would have otherwise ended up in a landfill, killing fish, we use. So we're gonna use this thin wire to uh, attach our connections to the controller. So I'm attaching this thin ultra ATA wire to this connector that we're gonna put at the bottom of the controller down here. And here's my diagram I always use. Here are all the buttons from the controller and they're gonna be attached to it so the controller can be controlled externally. 
So once I wire up all these small connections, I can start attaching it to the physical controller itself. All right, we've got all the connections on, so I'm going to glue this onto the controller, and then we'll start wiring it up to the individual spots. Here's our connector, and we very carefully wired it to all of the button contacts. This is actually exactly what I do when I make one of those controller monitors for the video game industry. So all the buttons, the important things, are brought down to this port. So we can either see what the buttons are doing to program the macros, and then we can also control the buttons with an external microcontroller. And that's the part we're going to make next, the breakout box. So here's the connector I wired up that's going to go into the bottom of the controller and pull all the signals out to the breakout board. All right, so here's the controller. It's got the plug on the bottom of it that has all the connections coming out, which is just like my uh, controller monitor. And here it's going into another one of these um, PIC32-based Arduino-compatible boards. And uh, I don't know, I like using these. I'm used to them, it's easy. And I've got all the inputs hooked up here. So what the computer's doing right now, or what this is doing, is it's just looking at these inputs. These are set as inputs. So on the controller, if a button's not pushed, it's being pulled high, so it's a one. If you push the button, it goes low and it's a zero. And you can see it here. So we can actually sniff what these buttons are doing without interrupting the signals going back to the Xbox 360. A, B, X, Y. Now that we can sniff what the buttons are doing, the next step will be to demonstrate how we can trick the controller into think the buttons are being pushed even though they aren't. Okay, here's the computer and it's got the wireless dongle hooked up so we can see what the wireless controller is doing. We can do a, B, X, Y to see one, two, three, four light up. Now I'm gonna plug it into the microcontroller and the microcontroller is going to virtually press those buttons for us. Give it a second to boot up, but you should see it start to go in sequence. There it goes. All right, so the next step is going to be to hook up the multiple input jacks for the external switches and make it so clicking a switch will execute a macro with the main face buttons. All right, so we've got it plugged into the controller and now I've got a macro running. Now, these will be programmable in the next step, but we'll just do a demonstration here. So there's gonna be an external foot pedal switch hooked up like this, and this is a pretty standard way to do it, just using a, a jack. So on the screen here, you'll be able to see what's going on. So I'm just gonna hit this with my tweezers, which will indicate like a foot pedal switch or some other accessibility switch, but then it'll do a complex macro. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, E, A. So now you have 30 lives. In the next step, which I always say, we're going to make it so you can push a button, click the switch you want to program the macro for, then do the macro on the controller, and then it'll store it on the EEPROM. All right, so I'd like to put a liquid crystal display on this so it can prompt the user what to do. I got this one from uh, Newark Element 14. It's a 16 by two LCD with backlight. And to use it, we're just going to use a standard Arduino library. Here on the screen, you see there's a liquid crystal library and uh, you can do this in four bit mode. Basically you call this where you tell it what the pins are, including the data pins and uh, uh, register select and enable. And then all the commands are built in. You know, you could manually send the bytes from your record controller by looking at the PDF documentation for the Hitachi controller, but there's really no need, need to. You just go to Lumex's uh, website, get the downloaded PDF, figure out what the pinouts are, wire them up to your microcontroller, and then send, send the commands right to it. Uh, here, we'll show you over here what it looks like. All right, so here's our data connection. Here's our command connection with power. And one thing that's important is there's one pin that's for the LCD, um, power drive also would be considered the contrast. You basically have to hook that up. See, you've got a little potentiometer there for the contrast. If you don't hook that up, you won't see anything on the display and you won't know that it's working. But we've got this hooked up to the microcontroller, so when we power it up, it'll give us a message and guide us through the macro programming of the controller. Okay, now we see the display. We can push the button. Click switch to program. So let's say we want to program switch one. We hit the button and then we put in our macro and the screen guides us along. Okay, it's time to demonstrate this macro controller. So we put this jack here, so this switch will be macro number one. 
Then we plug the data connection into the controller here, and we're set to go. I don't have one of the accessibility switches, but I just put a little switch here on a cord to simulate it. So I'm playing Batman Arkham City, and the sequel will probably be Batman Arkham Planet. Uh, it's not Wolverine, but it's got, you know, beat em up combos, so I think it's appropriate. So yes, I will put in a combo here. I guess I'm Catwoman at the moment. All right, so we push the macro button. The screen tells us that we need to click the switch we want to program, so we're gonna click this uh, accessibility switch. Then we put in the macro, how about slash, slash, whip, whip, punch, punch. Then we hit this to stop it. So with, with some help, uh, one of his friends or family can move the character around and then he can do the action motions just by hitting one button once, so he'll do all the attacks to beat up the bad guys. Or Wolverine, or Batman, or whoever he is. And actually in a game like this, this would be handy for anyone because it, when you're Batman, you have to do like, bam, 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 <laughs> this combo move. So um, macro controllers could be handy for uh, any player, but this should also help him uh, get into the games and do complicated movements and actions that he otherwise may not be able to. And then you can hook up to up to eight different switches and eight different macros, so you could all, all sorts of special moves could be put into it. So there it is, the uh, Xbox 360 macro controller. Uh, hopefully this will help Patrick enjoy his games, such as Wolverine, and allow him to do the complicated beat em up motions that uh, those games are all about. And of course, if anyone else in the audience has ideas for accessibility controllers for special needs uh, that their friends may have, uh, send them in and uh, we love to do them. It's a great challenge. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be working on some DIY consumer electronics projects, just in time for the Consumer Electronics Show. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.